So now that you know a little bit more about what monitor objects are, you've seen some examples of what can go wrong when you don't synchronize things properly, let's start talking about some solutions. And so we'll start by talking about synchronized methods, which are a mechanism provided by Java's built-in monitor objects to support mutual exclusion. So hopefully you know what mutual exclusion is at this point. So the, the thing we're going to do here is we're going to provide a partial solution to the buggy queue problem using something called the busy synchronized queue. So remember we had buggy queue before, now we have busy synchronized queue, which you can get here. And this is going to be a implementation of the bounded queue, and it's going to properly protect the state, the fields, that make up this particular class implementation. So as we'll see, the constructor is going to take in the capacity, and we're going to go ahead and make a new link list, and it's going to have a max size capacity here. I could also use a, uh, an array blocking queue. I just use a link list here. So the way we're going to solve part of our problem is by using synchronized methods. So you can see here that the methods that we have that are part of the bounded queue interface, offer, poll, is empty, and so on, are now going to trivially be made thread safe by putting the synchronized keyword in front of each of the signatures of the method, or, or as part of the signature of the method. So a synchronized method is always serialized with respect to other synchronized methods called on an instance of a class. So remember that synchronized methods always refer to instances of, a, of an or, or objects as instances of a, of a class. So what it says is that only one of these methods at a time can be running inside an object in the context of a thread. So we have a bunch of threads that are trying to get access to the critical section of an object, an instance of busy synchronized queue, and only one of those synchronized methods can be in here at a time. So pretty straightforward idea. And so essentially, this is along the same lines as a, a Java Rantrant lock, but unlike Rantrant lock, which is a class, that you have to make instances of and do lock and unlock operations put, and put them in try finally blocks and so on. Synchronized methods are really syntactically part of Java. So you just go ahead and make the synchronized keyword and then Java handles everything. And it does it basically using block, the block structure entry and exit from the method, which is essentially the open curly brace and closed curly brace. So when you use synchronized keyword in the method declaration, the entire body of the method is serialized. So if you take a look, you know, synchronized, offer, this whole thing is run in only one thread in a given object can be running this method when it's running. And so this code can be executed without having to worry about race conditions within the state of the object fields. Now, interestingly enough, the synchronized keyword is actually not considered to be part of the method signature it's really considered to be an implementation detail. So you can read more about this to learn about what that means. And in particular, if you subclass from busy synchronized queue to make something called synchronized queue, the synchronization is not inherited by default. You would have to come in and make these methods synchronized as well. So you could either put them here in the signature. It's not really in the signature. It's, it's in the declaration. I should use that phrase. That's a better phrase. So the declaration of the method, you have to put synchronized there. Or, as we'll see in the next part of the lesson, you could have synchronized statements within the method. Those are two different ways of doing things. So let's quickly talk about some of the benefits of using synchronized methods. So they can trivially be detected by just looking at the documentation for the class. You can see, aha, this is a synchronized method. It's very clear. You just glance at it. It says synchronized. I know only one of those methods can be running at a time in the context of this, op this object. Another thing that's nice is the method is the unit of synchronization. So we know that anything inside that method will be mutually exclusive with respect to other methods called on that object. Um, and the syntax is also nice and compact. So there are no explicit synchronized statements. You just put the synchronized keyword at the top, and you're done. So it's no surprise that this feature has been around in Java since the very beginning. It's very simple. It's kind of hard to screw up. You don't have to think much about it. You just say synchronized, and you're done. There are some downsides, of course. 
Um, so one problem is that synchronization, the synchronized keyword, always works on the intrinsic lock, which is part of this, this object. So oddly enough, it's therefore possible for other objects to synchronize with it too. Now this is a kind of a bizarre use case, but there's nothing to stop you from doing this. So let's assume for sake of argument we have a busy synchronized queue called Q, and we have thread T1, and this is saying, you know, while Q is empty, do something or other. And over here in thread T2, it's synchronizing on Q. It's calling synchronized on the Q object. Well, strangely enough, that synchronized statement will prevent this thread from ever getting access to that is empty method because this guy grabbed the lock. And let's say he goes to sleep for a very long time. This guy will just sit, sit here and spin. So it's by kind of putting this um, by kind of putting synchronization into the interface for the object and using this, you can have other people kind of lock you out of your own abstraction, which which is weird, but it's possible to do. And, and obviously very confusing. Another problem with synchronized methods is that the granularity of the synchronization is very coarse grained. So synchronization is on a per object slash per method basis. And it shouldn't be is a a, it should be is a per object and a per method basis. So the method is the unit of granularity. And we'll see in a, just a little bit that could be too coarse grained. You might have finer levels of distinction you could make within a method thereby shrinking the critical section. And it's very important to try to keep the critical section as short as possible. So if you have a synchronized method and a really long implementation with hundreds of lines of code, you've just made that entire 100 lines of code the point of synchronization, which could be way, way more than you ever need. OK, so that's a quick overview of synchronized methods.